Nigel Farage, uh, certainly an ascendant political figure uh, in the UK, led the charge for Brexit last summer. Um, we've got him on the line now. Nigel, are you there? Yes, I am. Good, good evening. What's, what's your reaction to this? Um, well, horrified. I mean, this is a direct attack on children, which marks a new low, I think, um, in all forms of terrorism. I mean, we've seen, over the years, we've seen attacks on all sorts of different communities. In fact, the last nail bomb we saw in the United Kingdom was actually planted in, in a gay pub. So we've seen all sorts of horrendous things happen. Uh, but a direct attack on kids, it is absolutely awful. What do, you, what do you think the ramifications of this are going to be? I mean, given that we don't know anything beyond what we've reported now, but it does, it raises certain suggestions, and I, and I wonder if it will change the nature of the debates that have been going on in the UK for a while. Well, I think to a very large extent, we've looked at uh, the kinds of terrorism that have happened in Belgium and France, and, and, and they've been incidents, repeated incidents. I mean, 20 incidents in the last three years in France of Islamic terrorism. And I think we've kind of, I won't say got complacent, but we've convinced ourselves that we're in a better place than the rest of Europe on this. Uh, now, obviously, I'm not going to rush to judgment as to who the perpetrator is, um, but uh, I think that any sense but the United Kingdom is, is safer than France or Belgium has rather disappeared this evening. It sure seems to have. Were you surprised that this took place in Manchester rather than London? Yeah, funny enough, I was actually in Manchester myself tonight. Um, I mean, it is our second city. Um, it is a big city. It is a thriving city. Uh, but yes, you know, we think of when terrorism happens in this country, we think of the London tube bombings. We think of uh, the guy who run, ran those people down on Westminster Bridge. Uh, the fact that it's happening outside of London, the fact that it's directed at kids, uh, this is going to be, this is going to be a very big shock for the country when it wakes up tomorrow morning. There's an election coming up. Does this play a role? Well, so far in the election, uh, we've been talking basically about Brexit and completing Brexit and, and actually terror, um, open door immigration. They've played relatively low roles in the election campaign so far. Now, there are 16 days to go. Um, if it were to turn out that this attack let's say for argument's sake, had been taken place by somebody who'd been fighting with ISIS in Syria and had returned home, uh, that it does clearly have the potential to change the way people think and to change the whole debate. We've just not been talking about security in this election at all so far. From tomorrow morning, we will be. Why is that, do you think? Um, I think that Brexit on its own is such a massive defining issue in British politics. I mean, it's the biggest thing constitutionally that's happened in this country for over 300 years. Um, and that has completely dominated the debate. Plus, as I say, we've, we've really rather thought that these nasty things happen in France, happen in Belgium, happen in places that haven't got as good a security services as us. We have been, I think, lulled into a slight sense of complacency. Do you think a fear of terror played any role in Brexit passing in the first place? I think it did. Um, and in fact, I, I very much used what Mrs. Merkel had done uh, when she'd said, you know, as many of, you, as many of you as want to come can come. And of course, there wasn't a single security check on anybody. So yes, it did play a factor in Brexit, uh, but not as big a factor as the democratic concept of getting back control of our country. That was the primary reason for Brexit. We wanted to make our own laws, not have them made somewhere else. But certainly, uh, you know, terrorism, open door migration, and still, I mean, to this very day, there are tens of thousands of people a month crossing the Mediterranean and getting into Europe. What, now, Jeremy Corbyn um, represents at least one half of the, the British electorate, or, or a poll, a, a position on the political spectrum there. What's his party's position on terror more broadly? Well, I mean, he, he takes the view that we're all world citizens. 
Um, he's totally relaxed, really, about people moving freely across the world. And he has, over the years, allied himself quite closely with um, Hamas, Hezbollah, uh, and even uh, the leaders of the IRA. I think on terrorism, he's very, very weak. And if this was to have a really big impact on any of the leading protagonists in this election campaign, I suspect that it's him that would be seen to be soft on this this year. Is there less security in Manchester than there is in London? Uh, well, London clearly has more security than Manchester, but I mean, this was, uh, this was a rock concert. There were 21,000 people there, mostly kids, although there were some parents in attendance. You know, they would have had normal security procedures, but it looks like this device didn't go off inside the concert hall itself. It actually went off in the foyer outside, uh, where I guess the public would have had access. Uh, it, it raises all sorts of concerns, but at the end of the day, um, it's very difficult, isn't it? It's very difficult to guarantee people's safety, security, wherever crowds of people meet. I mean, it literally, if you were to think about every single, uh, you know, soccer match, of every single rock concert, uh, you know, it's very difficult to know what limits you can go to with security without actually making the cost of these events prohibitive. Right. Very, very difficult problem. All right, and, and my, my last question to you, it, these, these things are impossible, Nigel, to anticipate, obviously, but was there any sense at all that the terror threat in and around Manchester was higher recently? Did you get that sense? No, not at all. I think everybody thought if there was going to be another incident, it would be in London. We have been on a constant high state of alert for a very, very long time. But everybody thought it would be, it would be an attack on a big symbol in London. You know, and right. I, I guess Parliament was the last one. Uh, the thought that uh, and I would say we don't yet know who, but the thought this kind of thing would happen at a concert for the teenage girls was almost unimaginable. Yeah, to children and their parents. Nigel Frosch, thanks a lot for that.